Hello and welcome to another video by Day Night Gaming. In this video, I'm going to showcase how I defeated Fatalis in Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Now, before we begin, I must first preface that I consider myself an average player when it comes to Monster Hunter World. Heck, I might even be below average in skill, which is why generally I don't post videos for this video game. But I noticed that there's a lot of players out there who are struggling to beat Fatalis. So I decided to make this video in order to help those who are in a similar skill range as I am. Also keep in mind that I'm normally a ranged player, but for this video I learned how to play melee. Very specifically speaking, the switch axe. So if you're struggling to beat Fatalis, don't worry. If I can do it, you can do it too. Also keep note that I did this in the multiplayer setting in the online gathering hall. And while the hunt started off with two players, it did end with having four players eventually join. So because of that, I'm gonna also showcase the Palico Cat's equipment and the reason why I used that. So here we go, here's my Palico. And please keep in mind that while the gear itself isn't exactly important, the most important thing to take note of is that I used the Vigor Wasp Spray. But as you can see here, my weapon that I used with a Space Machine Alpha Plus, which gives an element of sleep. So that sleep status can really help. You can do a large amount of damage by waking up that way. But yeah, once again, Please keep in mind the real winner here is the Vigor Wasp Spray. I have it at proficiency level 15, so that gives me the ability for the cat to heal me. But the biggest thing is on your first death, the cat will give you a blob of healing jelly that will revive you, thus saving one of your available carts from being expended. So now I'm going to give you a quick intro into the Switch Axe. Now please keep in mind that this is not an in-depth deep dive, primarily because I actually don't really know how to play the weapon that well. So I'm going to be teaching you exactly what I did. So there are two forms in this weapon. There's the Axe Mode, as you can see here, and then there's the sword mode, which we're gonna morph into by pressing the R2 trigger. Now it's important to note that we will not be using the ax mode in this video, and we are primarily going to focus on just using the sword mode. Also keep in mind that we're gonna be using the button layout for the Xbox controller. So before we begin, I'd like to showcase how to use the clutch claw because using the clutch claw with a melee weapon is different from using it as a bow gun or a bow player. So with our weapon sheath, we are going to hold down the L2 trigger, which will bring up our clutch claw and slinger aiming reticle. And then we're gonna press B to clutch onto the monster. After that, once we latched on, we're gonna hit the Y button in order to wound the monster. And if we had our weapon ready, we can hold down the L2 trigger, which will bring out the Clutch Claw, Slinger, Aiming Reticle while our weapon is out. And we would then proceed to press B in order to clutch onto the monster. Once grappled on, if you're not at the location that you wanna be, you can move left or right using your left thumbstick. This is very important because sometimes the only place that you can latch on it's either with the hind or the forelegs. With this knowledge in mind, you can relocate yourself up to Fatalis's head. This is very important because the location that you'll want to zero sum discharge is the head because breaking the head will make the fight much easier in phase three. So now that we've got Clutch Claw out of the way, we're gonna be discussing the combo that we're gonna be using for this video. So first with your weapon sheath, you can walk around and then you can do an unsheathing attack directly into sword mode by pressing the R2 button. And then after that, you can press B to do the next motion value attack, which will have your character do a double slash. And after that, if it's safe, you can then press B again to execute Heavenward Flurry, which is a really great attack because if all hits land, your sword gauge should be full. And because it's full, you can now start using discharge attacks, which are executed by pressing Y and B together simultaneously. Now, if you wanted to, after landing your elemental discharge, you can press the L2 trigger to shoot a clutch claw shot to grapple onto Fatalis. But this is all optional. If you wanted to, after the Heaven Sword flurry, you can just put away your weapon and manually clutch claw. But I'm showing you this because it's a good shortcut to know in case you get a knockdown on Fatalis. All right, so now that we have that out of the way, we're gonna buff up because you want to have as much free attack as possible when you fight Fatalis. So we're going to start off with Mega Demon Drug because this will last until you get KO'd. Next, we're going to use Might Seed and then we're going to follow up with Demon Powder. 
Now these are temporary effects, so you're gonna have to refresh them throughout the fight. Also note that Temporal Mantle is actually a very good mantle to use in this fight. All right, so now I'm gonna show you the full combo. Starting with the R2 trigger for the unsheath attack, followed by double strike using B, and then pressing B a second time for Heaven's Ward Flurry. And with our bar charged up, we can press Y and B together to get an elemental discharge. With an immediate follow-up with L2 trigger into a clutch claw to grapple onto Fatalis. And once latched on, we will now press Y and B together to do our zero sum discharge, which is the most important part of the combo and will yield the highest amount of damage. If you fully complete the zero sum discharge animation, after the explosion, you're gonna be thrown off the monster and when you land, you will be vulnerable for a very short amount of time. Now remember, anytime that your sword gauge is filled, you can activate discharge moves. So you don't need to go through that full combo and instead, if you want to, you can just clutch claw onto the monster and press Y and B together to activate a zero sum discharge. After you successfully activate your zero sum discharge, you can rapidly press Y to continue hitting the monster with your zero sum discharge, which will eventually lead to the big finisher, which will then explode and throw you off the monster. Once you land, you will then switch into axe mode. So you can either press R2 to switch back into sword mode, or you can put away your weapon and get ready for another clutch claw attack. Because at this point, once your sword gauge is full, you just want to be using zero sum discharges on Fatalis. Now it's important to note that you want to make sure you keep an eye on your sword gauge because once it depletes, you don't want to accidentally clutch claw onto Fatalis and try to do a zero sum discharge and realize you do not have any gauge and then you just end up clapping Fatalis, potentially risking an accidental enrage without a wall slam. In the event that you accidentally do do this, might as well take the time to press Y and wound Fatalis's head. Because if possible, you always want to be landing zero sum discharges on a wounded hit location, as it will dramatically increase the amount of damage you do. So now I want to move on to the dangers of being locked in position. So it's important to note that when you press A, you can execute an evade maneuver, but you can only do this when you are not animation locked into an action. So in between each motion value of the combo while you are stationary are the only times that you can activate an evade. And you cannot do this while you're latched onto the monster. But if you are latched onto Fatalis, as long as you're not locked into an animation, you can press A to jump off Fatalis. But please keep in mind that you will not have any invulnerable frames during this time. So with all of this in mind, let's go through the combo and discuss when you can actually evade. So here I'm going to use the unsheathing attack into double strike. And only when the double strike animation is finished that I can actually activate and evade as you can see here. So we're going to go into unsheathing attack into double slash and then we're going to evade by pressing A while holding a direction on our left thumbstick. Now we're going to do double slash into heaven's word flurry and then after we land then we can evade as you can see there. This even works after an unsheathing attack and this will all become very important because there are attacks in which Fatalis will attack directly under his feet and you'll need an emergency dodge. So as you fight, just try to keep in mind that you want to try and be as defensive as possible because Fatalis can and will hit really hard. So you want to limit as much exposure to his hard hitting attacks as possible. But at the same time, you need to accept the fact that there are times where you're going to have to take a risk because when you do zero sum discharge, you put yourself into harm's way. It is because of this that I generally like to unsheath my weapon and then clutch claw onto the monster to unload a zero sum discharge because that gives me the opportunity to do a Superman dodge if needed. So now I'm going to show you the three different armor sets and item sets that I use. Now please keep in mind the first set, which is my great sword set. This doesn't really matter. This is just to get some free damage in the beginning. All that really matters is having a ghillie mantle and a rock steady mantle. Everything else you can use whatever you want. Now it's very important to note that the item loadout, it has a smoke bomb and it also has a far caster. Those two are very important. Next, we're going to go into our switch axe set, which we're going to use for the most of the fight. And so the decorations, all that stuff is going to be important. As you can see, I used the black harvest switch axe, which came from Alatrian parts. And I used 
two-piece Golden Raytheon and three-piece Alatrian or Escadora armor. And that's going to give you some really good defenses and that's very important as surviving is more important than dealing damage in this fight. All right, as for the item loadout, you're gonna notice that I have Dust of Life and Life Powders, as well as Remax and Farcaster. Very important, as this is gonna be the most important part of this video. I can't stress it enough that surviving is the most important. And having Dust of Life and Life Powders, as well as a Farcaster, means that anytime you or any of your allies takes damage, you can be ready to heal them. And at any point that you run out of remakes for Life Powder or Dust of Life, you can farcast her back to town and get more. All right, so now I'm going to show you the sleep set. And this isn't really important. And it's only going to be used if you need a desperation sleep attack with the Dragonator at the end. If things are going really south and you're, you're just going to try anything you can do, a sleeping Dragonator is going to hit really hard, like 10 to 15% of the HP of Fatalis. But it comes at a risk because you're not actually going to be doing damage during the time that you're trying to sleep him. And it's actually very hard to find opportunities to land sleeping attacks while pulling him over the Dragonator. So don't depend on it. For the most important part, you just want to make sure that you have your Switch Axe ready. Alright, so now we're going to look for an online session for Fatalis because you want to be doing this with at least two players. Four player difficulty is really hard. Two player difficulty is actually really easy. So I recommend trying to find a partner and it's okay if you want to do four player but uh, single player for the first time is very difficult. So I, I recommend at least trying to find a buddy. So that's what I did and then grab the quest. Now for the food, it's very important that you want to be eating for elemental resist large as well as moxie. So that's going to be vegetable all in the light blue section. So that second row from there, as you can see there, you want to get all of those light blue vegetables. And that's going to give you moxie, feline moxie, as well as elemental resist large. Very important. Like I said, survival is key. And you're going to get a lot of fire resist this way. As well as Moxie, which will give you a second chance. If you get knocked out, brought down to zero, and you're above the Moxie threshold, then you have a chance to uh, not die. Alright, so let's go ahead and launch the quest. And as you can see here, I have my Greatsword set loaded out. I'm gonna take Mega Armor Skin as well as Mega Demon Drug, Might Seed, Demon Powder, and then I'm gonna equip the Ghillie Mantle before I go down on the Hitching Post. That's very important. What the Ghillie Mantle is gonna do is gonna make it so you don't aggro the monster. So it's gonna give you the prep time you need to go ahead and get ready. So when you land, you wanna grab the stone near the ballista railway if possible but there's also another stone over here near the cannons so we're gonna go ahead and drop mega barrel bombs right underneath one of the cannons the cannon that you want to pull them to uh, looks like my teammate wanted to put it near the far cannon which is fine now you want to load these cannons up and please keep in mind they can load up to five and your cat will probably load one in for you. So you don't have to load too much because it already starts off with like three cannons I believe. So you want to push the cannon over so it's facing the small rubble. As you can see there that small rubble right there. So he's now going to pull Fatalis into his Mega Barrel Bomb. So you want to use your smoke bomb and then your rock steady mantle so you can take a mite pill get the cannon ready and then go ahead and fire now seven cannonballs that land on fatalis is going to make an auto drop so you can get some free damage here as you can see here we messed up he didn't run into the barrel bombs i guess uh, my lane partner probably 
uh, might have miscalculated where he's going to shoot him. Anyway, so after he stands up, go ahead and forecast her back so you can switch to your switch accent. Now, once again, I want to reiterate that I'm not very good with melee. I normally play as a gunner. And this is one of my first few runs with a switch axe ever. I don't really know how to play switch axe. I only know how to go into zero sum discharge. So that's all we're going to be doing. And you're going to notice that I'm probably going to get hit quite a lot. But that's okay because the set's very defensive. And you're really primarily playing as a healer. So you're going to be dust of lifing and you're going to be life powdering. As well as you're going to be focusing on trying to break the head because the scariest part about Fatalis is in the third phase if you don't break the head at least once he's gonna hit with blue fire which hits extremely hard extremely hard it can one hit KO a lot of players so we want to get at least that first head break alright so here we go whenever Fatalis does flamethrower attacks that's the safest time to clutch claw onto the monster and to get some good head damage in. So now that he's all wounded up, see we're gonna make sure we wound the head. Okay, good. So that was a flamethrower move earlier, so that was a very safe time to clutch claw. Now we're gonna charge up our switch axe, so we're gonna be doing our unsheathing attack into our combo. Now as you can see my switch axe is charged up whoa okay and then oh wow okay so you gotta yeah survival is very important so try to super dodge whenever you can all right so here we go oh okay that messed up and this is gonna happen quite frequently fatalis is very hard to read as you can see but just tr keep trying to get in there and clutching onto the head oh, all right flamethrower as you can see here free damage so doing a zero sum discharge now after about two or three zero sum discharges it's already time to start hiding I'm gonna try and get one out nope fireball all right let's see tail snap I believe okay so I gotta charge up okay see there you go time to hide so we're gonna hide over to the right of the gate you're gonna see this little tent area. So we're gonna go behind that. And this will give you some more time to prep for phase two. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my seeds to bring in my defense and my attack. I'm gonna do some powdering. I can tell that my teammate just did uh, demon powder so I don't have to do that. So now we're gonna go into the ballista phase. So, okay, it looks like my teammate already moved the ballista. So he must have heavy artillery. Okay, that means he also picked up the heavy binder and we're gonna bind, oh there we go, yeah. So I'm gonna make sure the head is wounded so that he can use the roaming ballista on the head because we really need to break it. All right, there we go. Okay, now I'm gonna charge up my sword up during the downtime. All right, so I'm charged up. Oh, wow, okay. So yeah, let me uh, get some heals off real quick. Okay, flamethrower, once again a safe time. As long as you're not in the frontal cone, uh, flamethrower, frontal flamethrower is really safe. Okay, so let's look for a good opportunity. Oh, yeah. All right, so let's, you know what, let's use our temporal mantle. All right, so this temporal mantle is gonna keep us from getting hurt while we do our zero sum discharge. We're also not gonna get interrupted, which is great, so we get the full combo off. And Temporal Mantle really removes any dangerous opportunities except for flamethrowers because flamethrowers don't knock down a hunter. Alright, so here we go. We're gonna go back, re engage. We still have some Temporal Mantle. Okay, we're out of short charge, so no, let's look for a good opportunity. Wow. Yeah, the towers are really mean. And this is only phase two. So here we go. Okay, you know, let's charge up. Oh, oh, no. yeah, good thing I have temporal right there. 
All right, so let's get back into the action. I still need to charge up my switch axe, so here we go. Oh, this is a great time, flamethrower, so here we go. We know it's safe, all right. All right, that's our first head break. Looks like he got a zero sum discharge during that flamethrower. Now when he's down, you could still keep trying to go for zero sum discharge, as you can see here. It's uh, free damage, so might as well take the opportunity. I'm gonna try and grab one more time. Yeah, there we go. And zero sum discharge. Oh, walking attack, okay. I'm not exactly sure how Fatalis hurts you when you're latched onto his head, but there we go, flamethrower. Safe time to jump on. Alright, is there some discharge? There we go. Oh, asleep. Okay. Uh, so my cat, and probably his cat as well, has a sleep weapon. So this is a great time. I don't have bombs. I already used them earlier. But uh, just free damage anyway. How does he want to wake it up? What is he doing? Grabbing a stone? Yeah, okay. Yeah, grab the stone. So what he did there is he made sure to grab a stone so that he hit the rock or uh, the rock into the bomb so that one of the bombs got his maximum damage. All right, so let's charge up. I'm just thinking the same thing. All right. So here we go. Bar is charged up. Oh, okay, careful with that one. Uh, that move right there where he flame throws the floor, it does not count as a knockdown, so it can kill you if you're not paying attention. Alright, so here we go, this latch on. Oh, no, walking. See, yeah, I don't I don't exactly understand how Talos hits a hunter while he's walking if they're latched on the head, but uh, whatever. Alright, so let's climb up. Oh, he's gonna body slam. I should have jumped off. Uh, okay, here we go. Oh, nice. So he did a wall bang. When Fatalis is on all four feet and his eye indicator on the map is yellow, uh, you can sling or burst him into a wall for some pretty good damage, a couple thousand. All right. Oh, I ran into that. Whoops. Sorry, uh, talking while I'm playing can uh, kind of be distracting. All right, you know what, let's try and charge up. Oh, whoa, whoa. Five Ds of dodgeball, right? Okay, here we go. There we go, we're charged up. All right, let's get some zero sum discharges off. Whoa, man, mean, mean. He's flying, so this is a great time to latch on. Okay, so he thought the same thing. All right, so now let's climb over to the head. All right, let's go, let's go. Oh, wow, okay, you know what, yeah. Wounded. Okay. Better than nothing. I must have misclicked. That's cool. Oh, ouch. Yeah, his attacks just come out so erratically, so quickly. And one of the reasons why I really enjoy using the. the. what is it called? Altarian switch axe is it has a lot of purple so pretty much the whole fight you don't need to sharpen your weapon at all Okay, let's get some dust of life going out keep everyone healed. Oh, well, it looks like we have another Teammate who joined in so now we don't have cats so we have to play a bit safer because we don't have vigor wasp spray Okay, you know what I think he's gonna start burning the door so that's yeah, let's go signal. Try and pull Fatalis closer to the door because we're gonna have to run toward it. And we don't wanna be too far away. But you can't pull too far. You need to make sure you're semi, you know, in range so that he doesn't just keep sniping. All right, so there's a good place to fight him. Let's re-engage. Oh, flamethrower. Oh, Superman dive. Superman dive again. Superman! Okay. Alright, so here we go, pulling him back. Okay, yeah, you know what? Here, here we go. We can engage him here. 
So let's go ahead and charge up a bit. But we gotta be ready to run to the gate. Damn. Man, this guy's mean today. Okay, so let's heal up. Alright, this looks like a good opportunity. Come on, let's go. Charged up. Alright. Pretty sure within the next few attacks he's gonna wanna do his uh, face change attack where he's gonna flame the whole area. Gotta play it safe. Gotta play it safe. Right, let's see if we can get a zero sum off. Alright. Playing it safe. Don't worry about the time limit. Just play safe. That's all that matters. Get the clear. Keep the carts low. Oh, there it is. There's a the flame. See? So now we gotta head back to the fort. Climb up here. And then we have to hit the switch to bring up the door. But we wanna make sure that everyone can get in. Okay, it looks like uh, it's only the, just the two of us. So there we go. If you wait too long, the door will not come up in time. And uh, yeah, then you'll cook. All right, so this is phase three. This is where it gets really scary. Definitely, we're gonna seed up, get all our defenses back up and ready to go. He has quite a lot of dangerous attacks here. Make sure you have all your heels ready to go. And try your best to stay topped off. And also try your best to watch your teammates' health and keep them topped off. Because in this phase, he can deal quite a lot of damage. He can do like 140 in an instant. I've even seen him one-shot people from Matt's health, so you definitely want to be as careful as possible. Oh man, that body slam. The scary thing is he pins you. You never want to get comboed. As you can see there, I got pinned into a tail whip. Alright, so I got my bar fully charged, but I have to look for a good opportunity. Because you definitely want to play extra safe here. And try not to latch on when he's doing fireballs. Because those will always hit you if you're latched onto his head. Okay, well, since you're doing fireball up here, latch onto the leg. Ooh, dragon! Oh, got the blist binder. Okay, great. Get some free damage. I'm gonna go to the other side because I can't latch on when someone is latched on one side. So let's get our zero sum discharge going on. Boom! Alright. Okay, let's Superman dive that because we don't want to get bitten. Alright, just powder up more damage up in here. Now demon powders and they're really good because not only do they buff up your attack but they also buff up your teammates. Oh flamethrower, flamethrower. Okay. Oh I don't have charge. Or whatever. I'll just wound. Alright. So this looks like a whoa okay so when that happens, you have to fly directly toward him because uh, that's the only safe area. And then after that, when you get to a safe area, you want to use your life powders and your dust of life to AOE heal everyone who's still trying to get through the fire. Now, if you're starting to run low in a desperation hit while you're still running through the fire, you can use a max potion or ancient potion to fill you up. And then he's going to hit you with a flame wave and knock you down. If you get knocked down, that's good. Stay on the floor, don't stand up. And hope that your teammates heal you through it. Because while you're on the floor, you don't take any flame damage from his flamethrower. All right, so let's try and charge up. All right, we're charged up. 
Let's try and get a zero sum discharge going on in here. Oh, okay, so this is a 360 flamethrower. This is the move that generally kills people. So you gotta be very careful for that. Oh, another one. Okay, let's try and Superman. The, oh, nope. Yeah, it, it comes out quick. Okay, so that's a body slam. If he hit somebody, he'll attach them to their chest. So you have to use dragon pods. That's why I was holding on to my dragon pods. Uh, two dragon pods will flinch him, and that'll save your teammate. If you do not, he will die. All right. Oh, flamethrower. Oh my gosh. Okay. Let's heal up. Yeah. Wow, I didn't get a zero some discharge on that power up. Charge up. Oh, I should have uh, evade cancelled in between my uh, motion values. My mistake. All right. Look like a good opportunity. Nope. Wow. This guy is mean. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Dodge the flying flame breath. When he's flying, good time to latch on. Alright. So let's go and wound some parts. So let's go ahead and wound the legs, because that's where we generally are when we're trying to charge up our switch axe. So then I'll just charge up. Oh. Ooh, Dragonator ready to use. Okay, cool, cool. Overall, we're still doing really good. No one's really died, so. Let's try and get in there. You get somebody with that body slam. Yep, okay, let's uh, Dragon Pod again. Save our teammate. Ooh, that's Max Potion. Ouch. Stay at full. Stay at full HP. Very important. Yeah, just play safe. You have a lot of time for this fight, so play safe. Ooh, Dragon Eater. There we go. See, that's a lot of damage. Imagine if he was sleeping, that'd be double. Be a lot. But even even if they're awake, it's still quite a large amount of damage. And you get a knockdown, which is great. So there we go, I'm charged up. Ooh, okay. So once again, run to his location. We're pretty far, but I think we can make it. So here we go. See as you can see here, our teammates are healing us. Very important. Anyone who's who's Escaped out of the fire should always be AoE healing until all party members are in the safe zone. Very important. Remember, keep everyone alive. Watch everyone's HP. Ooh, alright. Is that a double head break? I think it is. Now, since we've double head break, we don't need to go for the head anymore, so now we want to go for the chest. So let's zero some discharge the head. Or uh, the chest damage in there. So as you can see here, now that he's double head break, the, f the flamethrowers don't hit so hard. And now it's much, much safer. So now we can just start going ham at this point. So go into the chest, throw some discharge. I don't mean to fight with Reckless Abandon, but you definitely can play a bit more aggressive at this point. So, and we're just gonna keep latching on. Alright. Looks like they got another part break. Okay, now run to the safe zone near him. Once again, get ready to heal people. Now, if you start to run out of heals, remember that you can always far cast her back and get more. So I'm going to go ahead and do that after this, once it goes online. So 
So he's gonna land. There you go, I'm gonna far caster. I want to make sure that I have the heals for my teammates. Very important. I can't stress this enough, right? Because the biggest enemy in this fight is the few cards that you get. You want to save every one of them. So don't worry about the clock. Worry about survival. Worry about everyone else's survival. And as a team, you can contribute your damage. Oh, wow, they down it. Nice. And there it is. See? I, I guess I didn't even need to go back, but better safe than sorry. For that, you know, go in there. Set your items. Bingo, bingo, bingo. Alright, and there you go. And we should get an evil eye because we double head broke. Should come in the rewards. Oh! Alright, got one off the car. There we go, there we go. So, yeah. There's pretty much the fight in a nutshell. Once again, I want to reiterate, I am not good at melee. I'm not even really that good at Monster Hunter. Right? I consider myself an average or below average player at best. But using a switch axe really helps to break the head and that's gonna help you survive phase three. So I highly recommend it. And uh, yeah, sometimes you just gotta play different weapons, you know, see what's best for every monster. Now I'm not saying that gun weapons aren't good. It's just that for this fight, I prefer to play it safe and get that head break, that first head break before phase three, and hopefully get the second head break during phase three. And there we go. Boom, boom. Support all star. 36 buffs and heals applied. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider smashing that thumbs up button. Uh, hit that subscribe and ring that bell uh, for notifications on future videos that I might be posting. And until next time, take care. Goodbye.